for the chapter related to the manual assembly line. Okay, so manual assembly line. After reviewing line balancing, how to do balancing, how to distribute the jobs in a line in a equal manner among people. Okay, try as much as possible to increase the percentage or utilization of an operator. Now, the first part is to determine what's known as a manning level. Simply is the number of workers of the line divided by the number of station. So W is the number of workers, N is the number of station, and M is the average ratio of workers divided by station. Okay, as well as we define what is known as utility workers. Utility workers, they are just not assigned to any station, but they help people if they fall behind, like as any Akhrin, or they leave the work for a personal break, like if they have just to take like a little break, lunch or any tea break, even they do maintenance and repair uh, duties. You see the equation here, if we incorporate in it, like we've seen it before as W divided by N number of station, number of workers, manning level. Now, if we incorporate in it number of utility workers, so how many in total over the whole station, like how many on the whole line, how many number of utility workers over the whole line divided by N, and N is a number of station as we've seen it before. Uh, WI is always an integer except for the unusual case where one work is shared between two adjacent station. Okay, but as a rule of thumb, the easiest way to do is just to calculate the sum up the total number of utility workers over the whole line. Okay, so first we're gonna consider a single model assembly line. A single model line that produce identical unit as the same product of the same product and there is no variability in the product. So exactly the same unit, exactly the same type of products. So we have here, this is like the first basic step. So we have the production rate is equal to the annual demand, number of shifts, number of hours per shift and n is equal to 50 assuming one uh, one working year one working year is 50 weeks so here number of shifts per week okay so this is the production rate and the production rate always is units the production rate sorry rp is always units per hour uh, let's consider let's consider a small example related to the uh, number assigning the manning level and number of utility workers and number of workers in a system. So a production a product with work content time. So we have T W C equal fifty minutes. And I need to remind you what's T W C. So if we have literally machine step A step B step C. And the first unit, the first product, the first job that goes through the line will consume 50 minutes. So literally, it's a summation of all the processing time plus the transfer time of all the system. But in one condition, this is the first point that goes through the system is to be assembled on a manual production line. The required production rate is 30 units per hour. The required production rate, so RP, is 30 units per hour from a previous experience with a similar product is estimated that the manning level equal 1.25 assume that the production proportion uptime is equal e equal 1 and then the repositioning at time r time at tr equal 0 determine the cycle time ideal ideal minimum number of workers required on the line ideal number could be achieved how many work station would be needed so we're gonna go back to the chapter and see how to work out those values so after calculating after calculating rp which is the production uh, rate which is da over 50 sh we know that the cycle time equals 60e over rp e is the efficiency okay excluding the unavailable time after removing the unavailable time, this is the efficiency of the system. So if it is efficient 50%, so this half of the time it is unavailable. This is time E, this is the time loss due to quality problem, labor problem, equipment failure, and all those other variable. Uh, so it is at 50% of the time. So this is the time where the system is up and available.
So FTC equal 60E over RP. FTC equal 60E over RP. Uh, so RC we define as the ideal cycle rate that the line should be adjusted accordingly. This is the perfect condition we have, which is RC. This is the best condition we have. So RP is equal, for example, 0 0.5 RC. E is equal to 50% as an example. So due to the unavailability of the system, due to any event that makes the system less available, we're not achieving the ideal anymore. We're achieving RP, which is uh, the average production rate. This is the actual production rate we have. E is always equal RP over RC. It's always the smallest divided by the biggest one. RC is the ideal. So this is like the best we might achieve in a system. Uh, I'm, I'm going to remind you that TWC is a summation of all the processing steps for the first unit. Or literally, it's like if the first for the first job, how much time needed to do this job. So this is TWC. Oh, it's a summation of all the steps. So number of workers or number of station here, simply is TWC is a summation of all the steps divided by cycle time. It was the product must work, which is usually the bottleneck. For example, if we have here, I'll show you like a really small example. If we have step A, step B, step C, okay, and this one is is assumably is one minute per unit, one minute per unit. And here is 0 0.5, and this one is 0 0.5 minute per unit. Okay. If the bottleneck of the system, if the bottleneck of the system, uh, sorry, the bottleneck of the system is one, which is a one minute per unit. Okay, which is machine B. Okay. So in a way, in order, if we are, if we must produce at this speed, if we must produce our item at this speed, which is one minute per unit so how many we have so it will be two divided by three is the one we have okay so all the time divided by three but in a way we don't do it as to we achieve we put as extra time for it because we have to work at the speed of the bottleneck what do i mean by this like each step will be assigned one minute to it one minute one minute because the speed of the system it will be equal to the bottleneck speed so we assign one minute to it okay so here the workload number of workers on the line a workload to be accomplished in a given period how much work we have divided by the available time so i will show you in a second what does that mean so if we have the workload divided by the available time okay so what do we have here is rp divided by twc twc is a month per unit and here this is the number of unit per hour Okay, so how much time does, does this take? But we know that TWC is equal 60A because we don't consider the whole time, we consider it as 60E. So here 60E divided by TC, this is known as RP. So we have 60E TWC divided by TC equal RP TWC. This is a workload, how much work do we have in a certain period of time? So the available time is always 60E after deducting the inefficient time okay i'm gonna show you like this one is extremely important okay so you must take very good attention of this step the one here okay so we, in this step we have several station starting one and ending n okay and at the same time we have this is the bottleneck station of the which is the cycle time in this case so I'm going to draw it here and I'm going to consider exactly three stations. So we have station one, station two, or a step you can consider it as a step, and station three. Okay. And each one of them we have what's known as repositioning time. So we're going to consider it as an average. Repositioning time, so to give time to the operator or to the labor to go back to the starting of uh, the cycle. So we have here TR, TR, TR. For example, this one it's a bottleneck. So this one is TC value. Okay, so we we don't call it TC anymore. We call it as T service time. And this one is TR, TR, TR1, TR2, TR3. And we have TS, TS2. Why the service one is TS1 and this one is TS3. So here is the idle time. Here we have 
the idle time of the system idle time and here idle time while in the middle the idle time is zero but when you we want to set the cycle time this will be the cycle time tc of the system so we have the t service time is equal maximum which one is like the maximum service time the biggest which is a bottleneck is equal to c minus tr as we did see here in a second so we have t as the maximum one equal to c minus tr tr value okay so repositioning time equal ts divided by tc or tc minus tr divided by tc okay repositioning time again is a time needed for the labor to go back to where he is supposed to be I need to remind you about one aspect. Uh, balancing efficiency is this the fact is when you try your best to reduce the idle time in a system. When you try your best to reduce this idle time in a system. Okay? So you try to rebalance the jobs. You try to redistribute the job in order to reduce the idle time as a system as much as possible. We have defined the TWC okay, is a summation of all those points. This one plus this one plus this one okay but we know for a fact that we have uh, how many steps we have here three times ts value as a service time we've got tr is the same for everyone okay minus twc minus twc the do, do difference between those two three times ts which is this value is the maximum okay but this one for z it contains idle time why the TWC is summation of the processing for all of them. So here the remaining is the idle time. I will repeat, like TS for this one, there is no idle time. So we took the maximum TS. Okay, we multiplied it by three. While here there is idle time and here there is idle time. While TS is only, it's only TS1 plus TS2 plus TS3 without the idle time. So what we do got here is the idle time hope. So we have to reduce this as much as possible. This will bring us to this formula. So we have WTS minus TWC divided by WTS, which is as much as possible to reduce the idle time. And this is like the balance delay. And we have EB equal TWC over WTS. EB equal uh, the percentage of balancing efficiency okay which is equal one minus d again twc is only the summation of the service time of all the steps while wts and this one is like the maximum service time times the number of station now if you go back to the example 17.1 so we have the work content time is 50 minutes Okay, and manual production, the required production is 30 units per hour from a previous experience and we have the mining level of 1.25. Assume that the proportion of time equal 1 and that the repositioning time TR equal 0. Determine cycle time, ideal minimum number of work required on this line, ideal number in part B could be achieved, how many work stations would be needed. So the first question is to determine the cycle time TC. So we have... We know TC equals 60 E over RP. So it's equal 60 E over RP. Literally, we have E is equal to 1. So 60 times 1 divided by RP is 30 units per hour. So we have TC equal 2 minutes per unit. What does that mean? We have to produce as this amount in order to achieve our production. In order to achieve our production. So the ideal minimum number of workers required on the station. We know that TWC is a summation of all the steps. Divided by TC, each step, how much time does it require? So we have W equal TWC divided by TC is equal 25 workers so minimum of 25 workers as the manning level equal 1.25 so the a number of station equal w divided by m so 25 divided by 1.25 so we have 20 station in a way we have 25 workers distributed among 20 station in order to do example 17.2, a manual assembly line has 15 workstations with one operator per station. Work content time to assemble the product is 22 minutes. Okay, uh, the production rate assumes that the proportion of time and the repositioning determines the balancing delay. We know that the TC equals 60E over RP. Okay, so it's equal 
60 times 1 divided by 35 units per hour is 1.7143 minutes. So the service time is TC minus TR is equal to 1.6143 minutes. With n equal 15 worker, we have n equal 15 worker station. Sorry, workers or station. So we have E B balancing the efficiency is T W C divided by W T S. Okay, so 22 divided by 15. W T T S the one we just calculated 1.6143. So the balancing efficiency is 90.85%. Okay. For example, 17.3, a manual assembly line must be designed for a product line with annual demand of 100,000. The line will operate 50 weeks a year, 50 shifts, 7. hours per shift. Work unit will be attached to a continuous moving conveyor. So it does not stop. Work content equal 42, and we have repositioning for the operator to go back to the start of the conveyor. So there is conveyor going through all our station. So the first question is, determine the hourly production rate. So we have RP equal DA 100,000 divided by 50 SH. We have five shifts per week. We have 7.5 hours per shift. And DA is 100,000 units per year. So this one will take us to 53.3 units per hour. Um, Number of workers required. We need to define number of workers. We know that TC equals 60E over RP. So E is 0 0.97 and we have RP is equal to 53.33. So TC is equal to 1.09125 minutes. We could calculate from it that service time equals 0 0.99125 minutes. And the minimum uh, number of workers is TW, the minimum number of workers, TWC is 42 minutes divided by TC. So 42 minutes divided by, uh, we, if we don't have TC, we're going to do it as, uh, as EB times service time. So 0 0.92 times TS, 0 0.99125. So this is 46.6 or 47 workers. Let me just take you back, if I manage to find it. I'm gonna take you back for one second, please, uh, to the equation we just did like a minute ago. Or right, this one. Okay, so we have EB is WTS, as you could see here. EB is TWC divided by WDS, while TS equal T cycle time minus TR value. So this is lecture one, okay, of the manual assembly line.